Today we will see what is higher derivative and how to figure it out. Because sometimes it is really useful to find the differential coefficients of a derived function. And usually we denote the rate of change of any function uh, by d by dx, y is any function, by y prime, or also written as f of x prime, if the function is dependent upon x. So talking about the rate of change of dy by dx, or the rate of change of y prime, so this is also written as, because y prime is dy by dx, so dy by dx is equal to d square y by dx squared. So this is the first derivative, first derivative, and this is known as the second derivative. There are a number of symbols that we use for derivative. The very common symbols are dy by dx, f y prime and f prime, and the other are y1, the first derivative of y, and df by dx if f is the function. And for the second derivative, we have d square y by dx square, y double prime, f double prime, y2, that is uh, second derivative of y. The second derivative of y can also be presented by d square y and d square f by dx square. And same the case with the third derivative or all of the other higher derivatives. So the least higher derivative is a second derivative and we represent the fourth derivative as f to the power fourth of x. This is the fourth derivative is represented by d4f over dx to the power 4 and all the other derivatives uh, 4, 5, 6 derivative and 7 derivative and so on. So the general representation is dn of f by dx n. This is the symbol that we use for the nth derivative. Now moving towards an example. Here the function is in a parametric form where theta is a parameter and x is equal to a1 plus cos of theta and y is equal to b sine of theta and we have to find the derivative, the second derivative of y with respect to x. Now we will use chain rule because x and y both depend upon theta. So first we will find the rate of change of dx by d theta and dy by d theta. So let's start by finding dx by d theta first, where a is a constant, so a comes out, d by d theta of 1 plus cos of theta, and d by d theta 1, because 1 is a constant, is 0, and cos of theta is equal to minus sine of theta. So we will get minus a sine of theta is the rate of change of x with respect to theta. Now moving toward y, dy by d theta. So the rate of change of y with respect to theta is b comes out. So d sine theta by d theta is equal to cos of theta. And this is the rate of change of y with respect to theta. Now we will use strain rule that is that is dy by dx is equal to dy by d theta into d theta by dx. So as we found the value of dy by d theta, that is, that is b cos of theta and d theta by dx, we will take the reciprocal of this thing and now putting the values. So dy by dx is equal to b cos of theta, that, that is the value of dy by d theta and uh, d theta by dx, 1 by minus a sine of theta. But this is only the first rate of change of derivative or the first derivative only. Uh, we have to find the second derivative. So for the second derivative, we have to find the rate of change of this with respect to x. 
So d by dx of b over a minus cos theta over sine theta, we can write it as cot theta. So this will be dy by dx squared. Now we have to find the derivative with respect to x, but the function is in theta. And theta is not a constant, which means that we have to write it and then d theta by dx. That is the rate of change of the function, that is square of theta, and then the rate of change of this on which the function depends with respect to x here, because we are finding the rate of change of the function with respect to x. So this is minus b over a, the rate of change of cot of theta is equal to minus cosecant square theta. Then d theta by dx. So the value of d theta by dx can be take from this dx by d theta by taking the reciprocal of this thing. And this is minus 1 over a sine of theta. Now it will be Second derivative will be minus b over a square second cosecant square theta by sine of theta. And we can write it as minus b over a square cosecant cube of theta because sine of theta is the reciprocal of second theta. And here is the second derivative of this parametric function. Let's see another example. So the function is y is equal to e to the power minus ax and we have to find the third derivative of this function. So by finding the first derivative of this function d by dx of e to the power minus ax because this is an exponential function with the base e so it will be minus e to the power minus ax into the derivative of the power minus ax. Here a is a constant which means that the first derivative will be minus a e to the power minus ax because dx by dx is 1. Now the second derivative is equal to minus a du by dx of e to the power minus ax and d by dx of e to the power minus ax is is this because this is the first derivative that we have found so minus a and just putting the value of the first derivative that is minus a to the power minus ax we will get a squared e to the power minus ax and this is the second derivative now we have to find the third derivative that is why triple prime d by dx of a squared e to the power minus ax. Again, we just have to write the value of the first derivative because derivative of e minus ax is this value minus a. So a squared into minus a e to the power of minus ax we will get minus a cube e to the power minus a x. So this is the required answer. This is the third derivative. As you can see, it was really easy to find high derivative if the base of the first derivative was clear to you. So in the next video, we will talk about some of the expansions formulas. So stay tuned. Goodbye.